Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's town hall. We are very excited and actually very proud to share with all of you the latest information about the proposed golf course renovation plan and the facilities improvement plan. I think you will be impressed. Today is the latest, but clearly not the last chance for you, the members of Stonebridge, to review these two proposals and let us know what you think. Here's how the meeting is going to be conducted. As you obviously know, the, for health safety reasons, this meeting is being held virtually, but there's a real benefit to conducting the meeting this way. Everyone gets a front row seat to see and hear what's being said. And as with any virtual meeting, you have an opportunity to ask questions, make comments during, this, during the meeting and after the presentations are completed. You can post your questions and comments anytime throughout the meeting, but we will respond after the presentations are completed. After the meeting, you will, you will be sent a special email explaining how you can ask additional questions and make additional comments. We, can, we will then be able to track and tabulate all of your questions and comments, share them with the appropriate subcommittee members, <clears throat> answer your questions, and incorporate your comments into our deliberations as we continue to fine tune both plans. So let's begin. How did we get here? More than three years ago, some forward-thinking members, better known as your strategic planning committee, got together to try to figure out what Stonebridge needed if it was going to thrive and prosper in the future. What will Stonebridge need to remain competitive with other clubs in Southwest Florida? What does the membership want? And more importantly, what would they be willing to pay? Surveys were taken, questionnaires were completed, <coughs> focus groups were held, followed by more surveys and small group interviews, all intended to get feedback from you, the membership. But the members said that they needed and wanted became clear. They needed to renovate the golf course and do it no later than 2023. They wanted a bigger and better bistro, an updated grill room as well. They also said that they were frustrated by not having enough rooms available for their favorite club activity like cards or mahjong or enough space for Stonebridge committee <coughs> meetings. And they felt the fitness center was frankly just too inadequate. Last year, Stonebridge's president, Larry Traub, formed two subcommittees to develop and present to the members a detailed golf course renovation and a facilities improvement plan. Today, you were going to see and hear the latest on both of these plans. So let's begin with our first speaker today, the chair of the strategic planning committee and the chair of the facilities improvement subcommittee, Mrs. Gail Fisher. Thank you, Gail. We can Thank you, Jim. Good afternoon. So here we go. We're really on a journey that really started seven years ago with the successful renovation of the clubhouse. Who knew it? Who knew then just how popular the bistro, casual dining, club activities, health and wellness, including blue zones would become. So we'd like to thank everyone who's been involved in all the work that's led up to this day, the previous committee work, the board, all the members who participated in the various workshops, uh, focus groups, surveys, et cetera. And finally, I'd like to recognize the Club Facilities Improvement <clears throat> Subcommittee and thank them for their dedication and hard work over the last six months. And um, they've done this work for you our, and all the fellow members of, that are, reside here. The this team has collectively spent over 1,000 hours planning, reviewing research, responding to member questions, comments, feedback, and doing site visits to 11 clubs that have recently either are planning to or have undergone a renovation. 
Last but not least, thanks to Tim, his management team and staff for their input and efforts. Who knows better than they do about how operations work to make members happy? These are exciting times as we move into this next phase. We are at our at today at an important step in our planning. That is the step where we promise to ask each member to provide their feedback on the plans and ideas that you're going to see today. We thank you for your in valuable input over the last three years. We understand your priorities and the financial parameters that you're willing to consider. With this renovation, we believe that member satisfaction will increase and we will maintain and perhaps even improve our competitiveness within, the, within this marketplace. We've been working over the past months with talented professionals who are here today and I'd like them to just come stand so you're going to come and be recognized. Um, and my is uh, Mr. David Corman, he's our architect, and next to me is Mr. Jeff Nutter, who's the owner's rep working on our behalf and also we have the benefit of his being a civil engineer. So now I'd like to turn it over to members of our Thanks, team. Guys. Thanks guys. Um, now I'd like to turn it over to members of our team who are going to present the pr proposed plan to you. So the first up is Mr. Jim Hall. Thank you, Gail. Uh, first up, just a quick rundown of our Stonebridge business statement to be the friendliest club in Southwest Florida, providing a relaxed elegance and unsurpassed value. The goal of this committee, which worked autonomously, in fact, many of the board members did not see the plan you're going to see later today to last week. So this is kind of our work and we're kind of proud of it at this point. As Gail said, we visited several peer clubs to see firsthand the renovations and expansions that they have near recently completed. We asked them what worked, what didn't work well, and what they might have done better. We listened to management as to what they envisioned Stonebridge should and could be doing better to support our member needs. We looked at where additional space is needed for the various club activities, reviewed additional storage needs. During this process, many, and I can say many concepts were reviewed and discarded for various reasons. Our efforts were shaped by the following guidelines, Stonebridge vision, mission, and value statements, keeping our members informed and creative problem solving. How can we best use the space between the clubhouse and the tennis courts where can we find additional usable space? And at the same time, keeping activities away from Ashton Oaks as much as we could. Delivering maximum value for all members, young and old, seasonal or full-time, and also finding ways to decrease staff time in turning over rooms and moving tables. Addressing a variety of members' interests, expanded bistro, more fitness space and equipment, improved pool with lap lanes and zero entry, dedicated aerobic space, meeting space for various social groups, space for neighborhood meetings and activities, and as a bonus, we were able to fit in two boxy courts. Our project, Bridging the Future, key member priorities in order of importance to them. Number one, expanding bistro dining, year-round dining experience, sports bar atmosphere that maintains lake views, offers poolside service, and it will be adjacent to the bocce courts. Number two, renovating the golf course, which Tom Pinkerton will address later in this meeting, and reconfiguring the grill room bar for additional indoor-outdoor social setting, additional bar seating to include better movement around the back of the bar, and opening up the bar area to take advantage of lake views. Number four, delivering an increased space for activities in one place, that we are now calling our new community center for social events, cards, enrichment classes, fitness equipment, aerobics and fitness classes, book club, other activities, and additional storage space for essential equipment and supplies. Summary highlights, creating an integrated casual atmosphere. One, by expanding the bistro to provide additional indoor dining with covered outside dining capacity, this will require an expansion of the bistro kitchen, 
but it will also allow for a more varied menu and faster service. Direct access to the parking lot with a new covered entranceway. There will be handicapped parking in front of the community center. An expanded bistro will require a new pool. It needs to be re relocated and redesigned to allow athletic adequate land for the bistro. Integrated with this new bistro for poolside and bocce will be food and beverage service. Number two, enhancing the grill room bar area. Number three, building a new community center that will provide gathering space for neighborhood events, tennis socials, cards, clubs, meetings, fitness equipment, fitness classes. There will be a covered terrace overlooking the lake, pool, and tennis courts. The former sales center has presented challenges all along the way within our limited footprint. The angle that it was constructed is a waste of space. It is not economical to add a second story and there's no land to add addition to the first existing first floor. Number four, bocce courts. This was an added bonus that we found space for uh, that we find that is a fun and multi-generational activity. It we also find it was included in most renovations done by clubs in the Naples area. There were additional considerations. Our proposal conforms to the 2018 approved Collier County permit which bumps out the bulkhead on hole number 18 near the clubhouse. Storage space must be added. Refrigerated and temperature control for food storage for the new bistro, meeting rooms, fitness and pool. Now, imagine that this is your view across the lake looking towards the clubhouse. I was appointed to this committee as a liaison with the grounds, facilities and securities committee. I was a bit reluctant at first, as I had heard many rumors of what was being planned and the costs involved, even before plans were finalized. I'm old. I won't say how old, but old. <laughs> uh, why should we continue with a new assessment once the current one is done? I don't use all the facilities. I may not be here much longer. As the discussions of our committee and concepts began to take shape, I became a believer that this is what Stonebridge needs to do to keep us viable in today's market and in the future. During the last renovation, we tried to give members what the surveys indicated they wanted and what they would support. Turns out we were a victim of our own success. The bistro has been popular beyond our wildest expectations and the members want more space. Fitness classes and water aerobics have become extremely popular. Members are waiting to get into these classes. I think of the former members that have aged out and left Stonebridge for senior living facilities. Several have returned to social members to enjoy our facilities other than golf or tennis and stay in contact with their friends. The new Bistro and Community Center will give them a chance to do so. I will now turn the meeting over to Steve Deneen, who will share with you our exciting plans for the new Bistro and Community Center. If this were a high budget Broadway production, you would now hear a loud drum roll and see stars bursting on the screen. <laughs> I believe when you see what Steve has to offer, you will really believe that we're able to pull that rabbit out of the hat. Thank you, Steve. Wow, exciting times. Thanks, Jim. You may be 83. But you're definitely young at heart. I know a lot of people know that Jim has lived here for 20 plus years. He's been on almost every committee that's known to Stonebridge. And I just want to tell him from the bottom of my heart, thanks for your dedication to Stonebridge, Jim. If there was a any such thing as a Hall of Fame, you just would be in. <laughs> I also want to give our board a big thanks. I think sometimes us as members don't really give the board credit like they deserve. They put in countless hours, uh, time that they should be on the tennis courts or the, uh, the golf course, playing games or whatever. And I think us as members, now that I'm involved with this, I see what they go through. And y'all go through a lot. And I can tell you this with dealing with 
a lot of CEOs and different people in my lifetime, we have a lot of talent on this board, <clears throat> a lot of talent. And we should be blessed for that as members. But we have such a great board. I also want to give a kind of a special thanks to Gail. Don't get embarrassed. <laughs> I want to um, thank you for asking me to be on this committee. I kind of feel like it's been 12 years since I've done anything productive. And I feel like I'm back in the game again. <laughs> and I'm sure all of you all have had businesses and things. You get into your middle age, and you're in that rush, you're in that moment of, you know, enthusiasm. And you get up every morning, and that's what I've done for the last six months. So I'm back in the game. <laughs> Whether you put me in or not, I don't know. Let's <laughs> go off the bench. Also, want to make reference to three other people: Larry Trow, Betsy Gallo, and Charlie Gangiano. They were three board members that were part of this when this thing started. So let's not forget them. They are a part of this too. We're all family here. I'm coming to you today. I stand here in front of you as a as a member. Representative for you. I'm your voice. I don't have anything and no aspirations to be on the board. I just I'm just a member just like you. And I want to do good things for, for Stone Ridge. We can do this. I know there's a lot of people that get up here at four o'clock in the afternoon to go to the bistro, only to see that you got to sit there for two hours to get a take people that sign up for fitness class only to find out that it's full. This is why we need to do this now. Also having to share the dining room when playing cards or games, not having to accept your third choice when setting up your meeting. I've learned it. I've learned a quite a few little things doing this that Tim has told me that, uh, and I'm sure a lot of members don't know this. Um, Tim gets between 10 and 15 requests a day for meeting rooms. Now, I would have never known that. And I'm sure there's a lot of you all out there don't know that. Maybe I'm stupid, I don't know. But this is why we need to do this. We've got approval from Collier County to move the bulkhead to give us land to build upon. If we don't do this now, costs will continue to escalate and we will fall behind other clubs and we won't be competitive. I guess I've talked already too much and need to get on with the program. So I yield to the president. Ask the president, I yield to the floor for more time. <laughs> All in favor? No. Let, let that be noted. Okay. I've, I've seen that on TV, like on C-SPAN. I've always wanted to say that. <laughs> I said, when will I ever get a chance to say that? So thank you, Jim, for, for yielding that. In summary, uh, if we go to the first slide, that is our, the first slide there, Ben, I'm sorry. That is our existing footprint right there. As you can see, we're kind of constrained with, with land. There's, there's just no place to go whatsoever. Uh, if you go to the next one, Ben, that's the result of getting the bulkhead built out, tearing the old sales center slash fitness center down and building a new community center. You see how we got a pool, a pool that's almost double the size of what we have now. And we didn't double it just because we felt like doubling it. We doubled it because we had the room. We've got lap, lap lanes in there. We have a zero entry. We have a sun shelf, and I'll go over that in a minute on the next on the next few slides. But that's our over, overall view right there. So for everybody out there that's watching this, um, which I heard Jim was like 30, 40,000 or something like that. <laughs> okay. Uh, if you if you care to make a comment, a positive comment, as as we're here, uh, we'll take your pot. We're not here for questions right now, but positive comments we will accept. <laughs> but that's pretty impressive. Uh, you know, in this committee, we worked a, 
you know, every week we work with Dave Foreman and it was a case of, we would throw ideas out, he would throw ideas out, draw this, draw this, draw that, change A to B, B to C. We had so many A, B, C, Ds. I think that's where I learned to say all my A, B, C, Ds. But this is what we've come up with. This is the only plan that will work for what we have to work with. And this is the best plan by far. This will put us uh, a step ahead of most clubs in the area, which we have visited probably 11, 12 clubs since we've been doing this. And this is a, a very, very remarkable plan here. Uh, you go to the next slide, Ben. There's how we have achieved the land, moving the bulkhead out at the bottom. And, and to give yourself an orientation, the top will be north, the bottom is south. You can figure out the rest. <laughs> For those that are geographical challenged, the left is, would be west. I think that would be Mark Metzger. <laughs> anyway, uh, go to the next slide, Ben, if you would. There's a side-by-side -side view of what we had and what we will have. And you can see that that's quite impressive. Uh, on the left there, we've we've got bocce courts. On the left, on the on the west side, there you go. We got two bocce courts that are they have actually have covered area for shade. And believe it or not, uh, another thing we've learned, I've learned, I think it's Fasari, uh, Gail. Fasari has six hundred over six hundred members. On their uh, inner club, not inner club, but just on their on their bocce uh, clubs, their their, their members sign up. There's six over 600 members that sign up for bocce. I mean that's that's pretty good. And it's, I mean that's supposed to be they supposed to have inner club bocce, and I think Tim even said we could get shirts and maybe hats <laughs> for inner club. I think that'd be kind of cool. Maybe we could do something like that. Uh, but we'll go through some more slides and I'll explain as we go through the slides. Uh, there's a first floor aerial view of the new bistro, the community center. Uh, also point out that trellis way, the, uh, the orange there, kind of red. That is the walkway going to the new, from the parking lot to the bistro. And you see how we've, uh, we had to reconfigure the driveway to get into the uh, the community center and for deliveries, now it's a straight shot right out to Winding Oaks Way, and which has something else that's happened also is delivery trucks have hit the old fitness center. I don't want to say they were female drivers, but <laughs> I know that's I know that's not politically correct, but it actually was a male driver that did it. Anyway, uh, go to the next slide, Ben, please. There's a there's your first floor view of the new kitchen which is in currently in the old bistro. And we've had uh, kitchen architects come out and actually design that for what we need. Bigger kitchen to serve more people. Uh, the bistro, the new bistro to your right there. Uh, the old bistro set 120 people. And this one will accommodate 248, both inside and out. The blue part is the outdoor dining. It's covered outdoor dining. There you go. And the old covered part will still use that for outdoor dining also. So as you can see there, it's quite impressive. Uh, with your tables, you got a round bar, circular bar. You got a service area, it leads out right to the bocce courts. And there's your, there's your restrooms, much closer than what we have now. And you also got your walkway up there at the top. The grill room, we've what we've done there is changed the bar, made a circular bar. We've added 10 more seats to the bar. Gives you a view looking out on our lovely lake in the 18th fairway. We'll take the windows out there where the red is. The windows will come out and those will be nano doors. So it'd be more of an open indoor outdoor bar feeling. The circular part inside the, the, uh, the bar right there, that would be TVs. Uh, how many TVs? We don't know yet, four to six TVs. Um, 
I recommend it to just put a loop on people want a member member, just saying. <laughs> Maybe the President's Cup. John uh, Scarocco won the partner partner and Dan Graziano won the uh, invitation and he was all for that. <laughs> Next slide there, Ben, thank you. The pool, a uh, very well, well designed pool, modern pool. The pool we have now, people say, well, why do we need a new pool? The pool we have now is a developer's pool. Uh, it's outdated. Uh, you can't really, it's really not functional by the way it's so deep on one end and shallow at the other. This new pool has lap lanes. It's got a zero entry. What that means, it goes from about three inches down to the depth of the pool. It'd be good for kids. It also has a sun shelf. Sun shelf is where you put the chase lounge chairs, about six inches deep, and that's very popular. All those clubs we went to that had remodeled the pool had that in it. Very nice feature. It's also got cabanas, covered cabanas for shade. And we still maintain, we're going to maintain the uh, hot tub up there on the right corner. And something else we learned too, the pool uh, has to be four and a half feet deep. So that when like Mark Mesco wants to do a swim lapse, it has to do a flip turn, he can do it without hitting his head. <laughs> I'm picking on you today, Mark. All right. <laughs> also, the only thing that'll change really is for one person, Linda Ho will only be up to her waist now in the pool. When she was here, I told her, I love you, Linda. You know I do. Um, but it's a very nice pool. Uh, if we go any bigger than that pool right there, another thing we've learned is you have to have 10 bathrooms. You go from two bathrooms to 10 just by making another 20, 20 square feet. Also, you can see the trellis way up there on the left-hand side. That's what will go from the bistro out to the parking lot. And your next, your next slide will show you about what that's going to look like. If that's not impressive, I don't know what is. I mean, that looks good. There'll be some sort of flowering uh, plant above that, whatever Mark chooses. I'm sure he'll do a, a great job in picking something out. It's going to be a nice now, Mark. Uh, but that's what it's going to somewhat look like. That. Is that right, David? Okay. Did, where would that one come from, by the way? Do you remember where that picture was taken? Um, no, there is one at the Botanical Garden. That's the same one. Okay. I think it's a little more rustic than that one. It's a little more refined. That'd be good. Um, next slide, Ben, please. There's the first floor of the community center. Uh, down on the lower left, you have a hospitality room. What that does if you have communities, Brayburn, Middleburg, just any of our communities, Heatherwood, Thornbrook. If you're having some sort of a community party, you can set up your setups there and work out of that. It's all covered. The spot, the, the top, top left corner is your uh, yoga slash multi-purpose room. Uh, up on the top left, uh, you've got your elevator. We have to have a, something else we learned. It sounds like we've learned a lot in this, but and we have. That has to be the code. That has to be a big enough elevator to have a gurney in case you get to the second floor. I always said it had to be big enough to have a bunch of big people to go up there. That's why they're going up there to work out. <laughs> anyway, uh, the tennis office will be there on the far right hand corner. And then you got your two bathrooms. The main part of the, of the uh, community center. All those little squares, those are all tables. And once again, I hate to be uh, repetitive, but uh, there's probably a lot of people that's listening to this that I could give you a question, maybe on a trivia question one day. It's how many tables does it take to hold a bridge tournament? And I would have flunked this one for sure. But it takes 20. Just put that in your memory bank. It takes 20, 20 tables. We got 21. I think the extra one is for alternates or something. In case somebody heals over or chokes on something, <laughs> we got some extra people that 
But anyway, we've got plenty of tables. Uh, if you're having some sort of uh, community party and it rains, you can go inside. It's, it, that, that, that room will just function for all the, the card games that we have and uh, all the requests that Tim gets every day. That's, that's where we can handle that, put the divider up there and accommodate all those wants and needs. Next slide there, Ben. That, that's now we had a, a um, exercise architect laid all this out, and that's pretty much the scale, if I remember right. Uh, the part on the south side, those are tread machines right there. And all in front of the tread machines would be glass. And all be glass looking out onto the pool, looking out onto the lake and the 18th fairway. Uh, the room on the right will be dedicated toward the aerobics and fitness. That's what Jeff said he needed. He needed that much room to accommodate everybody that's wanting to do the, the workout. And we end up with more storage. And Jeff's office will be in the top right hand, left hand corner there. So this, all this equipment is spread out to where you're not walking on top of each other, bumping into each other. That's all pretty much drawn to scale. And it's, uh, we have so much room, we've added, do we add some more uh, exercise equipment, Gail? I think we did. Um, and also there's a terrace, the light gray there is a terrace that goes around the whole community center. And the part on the right there, which would be the east side, We'll look out to the tennis courts. Uh, we do have matches here. We have uh, Kevin puts on some demonstrations, um, and that'd be good for viewing there. And also, Jeff said that he could even open up those doors and even do yoga, or do different classes out there. So that'd be beneficial for that. The front of the terrace, uh, the south side of the building. You lose your cursor, Ben. There you go. That's all where you can go out there and you can sit or you can do classes out there, look out over the pool, look at the 18th fairway. And it also serves as a, as a shade for underneath for people that want to get away from the, the sun that are at the pool, which would be nice. Uh, next slide there, man. So what we've got, we've actually ended up with, uh, as far as square footage, the existing fitness center is 2,400 square feet. The new one would be 32 as far as actual fitness area. We go from the, well, the, existing, the total fitness center is 3,600 square feet, and we have to go to 8,300 in order to accommodate what Jeff needs, what the, we need for meeting rooms, and et cetera. Now you say, well, 8,300 square feet sounds like a lot. When you figure in elevators, extra bathrooms, both floors, hallways, storage, and extra office, uh, that all eats up your square footage. The main thing is we, we gave Jeff another third. He said he needed about another 30%, 30 to 40% of room to accommodate what his classes are. Uh, of course, we need the meeting rooms, and that's, that's the number you have to come up with to achieve that. Next one, Ben. You're too quick. There you go. Huh? Back one. So the bistro, the existing bistro is 140 seats. The proposed bistro, 284. So when you get out here at four o'clock, you'll probably be one of 10. Six o'clock, you'll have a seat. Uh, your grill room goes to 100 seats. It was 90, and those 10 seats came from the bar. I'm making a circular bar. The pool area, we go from 72 to 94. We pick up some extra seating there because of the length of the pool. And in the community center, which we don't have now, we have, so we go from zero to uh, 84. That would seat 84 four, that would be 421, 21 four times. So that's how we arrived at uh, the community center. That's your view coming up from the 18th green, 18th hole, looking at the backside of the club.
clubhouse. And I think uh, within probably a couple, three weeks, we'll have uh, four weeks, five weeks, six weeks, seven weeks. <laughs> oh, sooner? Okay. Okay. Yeah, David's working hard on getting us a north elevation of what the front would look like of our community center. So in summary, I like to say that this is what we, what we the members, ask for. This is a one chance to get it right. If we get this right, we won't have any redos because we have no more land. This is a one-time show. This will definitely enhance our Stonebridge experience. I know there's some, not, there's some naysayers out there and that's fine. We're always gonna have that. We know who you are. <laughs> and if you wanna email me direct, that's fine. Hopefully we can sit down and talk about it. Maybe you channel that energy into something positive. So join me and let's make Stone Bridge the best it can be. Uh, if you got any comments right now, that uh, Ben, if you got any comments uh, we, that we said we'd like some positive comments as we're showing the slides, hopefully yes. He's looking. So we'll skip that part. Well, that's. Not that they're negative, but they're they're just more fact-finding questions. Okay. Like, is there going to be a hot tub? Which there is. Yeah, there is going to be a hot tub. <laughs> so somebody wasn't listening. <laughs> well, I guess I want to say, I mean, this is uh, my first uh, presentation ever as a uh, doing a PowerPoint. Good. Some of I've done. Uh, I was going to ask for a mulligan. <laughs> I guess I didn't need one or maybe a breakfast ball. So I guess uh, in saying that, if, if the audience has liked everything they see, I know this is a somewhat a serious moment, but let's show your enthusiasm. And if you like what you saw, let's see what you, let's see what it is. I dropped the microphone. Oh. Okay, that's uh, I, I pity Tom Pinkerton who's following me, <laughs> but without any further ado, uh, the chairman of uh, the golf committee and chairman of the golf of the oh, I'm sorry, we've been introduced. You're good. Whatever I said, disregard, etc. <laughs> Thanks for Jim and Steve. Great job. Sorry about that. We just have a couple more slides here, but um. Once again, this is a review of our recommended club facilities improvement plan, and you'll see that we tried to optimize every piece of space that we could, and the bulkhead bump out gave us the opportunity to, to maintain some additional space down to the south side near the pond. I mean, we managed to keep almost all of that as open space. Um, so anyways, do you want to move to the next uh, slide? So now down to the important part of the uh, what we want to have from members is you're after this meeting you're going to receive bridging the future number 15 and bridging the future number 15 will have a link to about eight photographs and some bullet points and you will be able to provide comments um, to all of that. We would like to have your feedback by the 30th of April. Um, this week, we're also going to have poster size drawings on display. I think we'll have 10 or 12 where members can come in and, and there will be members of our committee here who will um, answer any questions you might have and you'll be able to look at these um, pictures up more close in person and see what's on them if you weren't able to see everything. Um, Wednesday afternoon from 4.30 to 6.30 we'll be here. We'll be here Thursday from 9.30 till noon in the morning, and we'll be here on Saturday from 11 to 1. So hopefully if you do want to come in, one of those times will work. If not, and you want a, a informal chat sessions, we're happy to arrange that if any neighborhoods want to do that. And we will consider as we have all along, all the feedback that we get on this. So if you go to the next slide. Basically, our schedule is in May and June. Hopefully, it won't take that long, but 
we're going to ask for two months to at least go through and compile and all and assimilate all the feedback so that we can test it for our understanding, et cetera. Um, from July to October, then we will work with uh, David and Jeff and have any needed changes made to the plan. Um, we'll prepare, prepare all the schematics, or David will, and final renderings, and we'll work on a member vote package. Uh, at the town hall on November 4th, um, there'll be the final presentation of both the golf and the facilities, and then we'll move to a vote directly after that meeting. I mean, there will be a period of voting time, but it will start right away after that meeting. And um, we had some questions uh, when we did a dry run with some people the other day about the construction phase and where am I going to be able to eat and get have beverages after that. Um, we expect construction to be the March, April of 2023. And Jeff tells us that construction companies, jet contractors know that construction lasts from April to October. So hopefully we can finish before November or December, but it, in case anything comes up along the way, it may take till that. And um, we expect that upstairs dining, either bistro or uh, dining room or grill room will be open the entire time during the construction that you'll be able to have at least food and beverage. They'll have to make some arrangements for golf. I think fitness is something we haven't yet determined, but as we get closer to the time, we'll have to make arrangements for people that want to have fitness. So with that, I am happy to turn this over to Tom. Well, well that's obviously an amazing uh, job that they did putting that together and hopefully it will be well received by everybody. It, it certainly should be. Um, I'm just going to update everybody on the golf uh, status, similar to what we've done in the special board meetings. Um, you know, the, the big thing here when I think about the uh, where we are in the golf course is really thinking back to 2010. Um, well, first, I should thank, this is our committee um, that has been working on the golf uh, program um, since the ad hoc committees have been formed. And so this is the group that we have been working with all along. Um, so just going back to 2010, which is the last time our course was renovated, um, we had at least three great changes that happened in 2010. And those three, there's probably many more, but the, the key things that happened is they put a lot of mounding around our water. Big change from what the golf course was before that. Uh, if you played it before 2010, the ball just rolled into the water. We now have mounds around there that keep that ball in play. They chose Tiff Eagle as the grass for the putting surfaces, which is a big reason why we have had great greens for a long, long time. Um, it gives Mark a great uh, grass to work with, and he takes great advantage of it, both in speed and um, trueness. Um, the third great decision was celebration for all other services. Our fairways are great. I played this morning. Um, it is thick, it is growing, uh, the golf course is in great shape. So we are very fortunate that they made those decisions in 2010. In 2023, which is the follow-up to that, our focus is gonna be on sustainability and design, okay? What we would like to do is make some changes to um, sustain the golf course so that we can go for 20 years before we have to talk about this again. Um, in March of this year, the USGA was out, they visited us, they did an analysis of our grass, of our course, uh, great morning with them, and they supported our recommendation, or actually recommended that around 2023 was an appropriate time for us to uh, renovate the golf course. So that was a, a very good group to meet with and get their point of view on this. Um, for sustainability, uh, what we need to do is we need to add some land. Uh, we have several spots that we really need some, Then maybe the, the next slide there. Um, land would help us. That pic first picture on the left is coming off the 3T. Uh, when you come off the end of that car path, you got about four yards on your left and four yards on your right to get out into the fairway. Um, it's hard to sustain that kind of activity with carts. 
picture on the right of that would be if we could fill in a little bit of that lake on three and get some land so that, that car path would go to the right, fairway would be in play. Another good example for sustainability is seven. That's the uh, pinch point on seven that all of our golf balls wind up near or in. Um, every divot there, every cart there, that's it, it just doesn't work. We gotta move that water in a little bit. We gotta open up on the right a little bit where the mounding is now. That makes that a sustainable spot on the golf course where we can both play and we can get to that green without doing damage or riding through everybody else's um, divot. Those kinds of changes throughout the golf course can make this course work for the next 20 years with no big changes. We have some design improvements that can also take place. Um, you know, the, we've already seen the great improvement on two. Two is now a great hole. Those trees are gone on the right. There's somewhere to hit the ball off the tee. It's, it's a much better hole. Um, three could be a signature hole for our golf course. Um, here's a picture of, um, what is that? That's 11. If you've ever tried to go over to 11 with the four or the five tees, it is a bowling out going down <laughs> to play that hole. It just doesn't work. So we can improve some design there, get a little land out there on the right side of that fairway so that there is a, a landing area or a bailout. Area. So that needs to change. Another spot for a design change is 17. We have a 17 green um, that is three-sided in trees. It needs to come out of those trees for the grass to be able to grow and for that green to flourish. So 17 is another great design change that can be made. And then that's not to mention, you know, the putting surfaces. We have some contours on 10, 11, 15 that you can all certainly think of that all need to be changed. And of course, every green will be rebuilt and redone. But those three in particular are just some that really um, need to be done. Another, um, Ben has the putting green, the practice putting green cir circle here. That green needs to be redone. That is a huge putting green, but about 25% of it can you use. Um, about 75% of that green, that is people just walk across to get down to where you can putt. So that will be fixed. And, and those kind of changes are, are things that will be done um, from a design point of view. So this 2023 renovation is really a logical extension of what was done in 2020. Um, there are, you know, operationally, um, the way this will happen. And Ben, if you could go to the next slide there. Um, late February, maybe early March, the golf course will be sprayed. The grass will turn brown, it will die. We will be able to play on it for a while. Um, and then mid-April, work begins. Um, heavy equipment will come out on the golf course, tear it up, do everything that needs to be done, which means taking literally taking the first six to 10 inches of surface off the entire golf course. It will be tees, greens, bunkers, the whole thing. Every hole gets totally rebuilt and grass gets planted. And in theory, we're playing golf in November or December on a brand new golf course. During that time, of course, the pro shop will be getting um, tee times for us at reciprocal courses. And so, it, of course, it dovetails with what the facilities is gonna be. So it's gonna be shut down from the spring to the fall same with the golf course. But for that one six month period, there's gonna be a lot of change and a lot of improvement um, at Stonebridge. Um, our subcommittee is still working on providing the architect with final recommendations for changes to his initial master plan. Um, we have met in our meeting with individuals and neighborhoods uh, to come up with solutions that best work for them and for the recommendations for the golf course. Our hope is to have uh, recommendations to the architect by June 1st, and uh, just to, so that he can begin coming up with the revised initial master plan of the golf course 
uh, for voting this fall. This has been a member-driven process from day one when focus groups were done to obtain info from our members as to what they wanted. And that was followed up by all the feedback <clears throat> that was gathered in February and March of this year um, to really make sure that we made the right changes, both from a sustainability point of view and from a design point of view. Um, so that's really where we are. And what we'd like to do now is we'd like to have Lorraine Christinus and Mark come up and answer some big questions about the design of the golf course and questions that members have had routinely for the last couple of months. And they will go through that with us. So thank you. <laughs> Let me preface preface this by I was given clearance to wear the hat so I could stay in character. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. <laughs> Okay, well, thank you for having us here. And uh, Mark, thank you for being here. My pleasure. Um, Mark has been a member of our committee and he's been invaluable as far as information. He's given us so much that I feel like I could design a golf course right now. <laughs> but <laughs> but um, in the process, we have um, gathered information from our members. We have had questions and asked, we've had uh, comments, we've had suggestions. So we took it all on our committee and we designed a frequently asked question list. So what we're gonna do with Mark is we're gonna ask some of these questions and get his answers from them. We've divided them into two different uh, areas, one about water and the other one is all everything else. So we're gonna start with, <laughs> we're gonna start with water. So Mark, before we get started, please tell me, what is a self-contained water basin? A water basin is an area of our land that the lakes within that basin are connected and tied to an outfall structure. So we have three different basins on our property. Um, what's important about that is, especially with this redesign, is anytime we do gain land and we have to move part of the lake, it has to remain compensated within that same basin. And we've asked this before, but that basin is not always where you take it from, it, it could be on one hole and you could move it to, and you could take it right. from another. For, for example, if we'd make it a change on number eight, we have all the way down to number two to make a change to compensate on the square footage there. And um, how does this influence our design, our redesign? What Do you have to make compensations for it or? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, we have, um, to make this golf course in, in a couple of our troubled areas, we have to we have to gain some playable acreage, and it's with our constricted property, it's really hard to find those those areas. And we've pinpointed a few of those key areas that we're going to have to fill in a little bit of lake bank. So we're going to have to move some water um, around to non-playable areas to gain as much playable acreage on the golf course as we can. Um. A majority of our questions have um, been asked about how much does it cost to move water? And um, Mark, if you could give us either a absolute dollar amount or maybe just give me <laughs> give me a percentage of the overall it, cost. For, for the budget that we're looking at right now, it's 4% of the total budget of the golf course renovation. So it's about 220 to $250,000. And that's for everything that you're going to build. Everything. All the water, all the water movement portion of it, all the earth moving that considers what people are calling water movement, mm -hmm. that's the cost of it. Okay, so not a big percentage of it. Okay, thank you. Um, Mark, um, can you tell us, we've been talking about sustainability and, <laughs> and over and over and over again. So we'd like to talk a little bit about how expanding the playable area of the golf course by creating more land makes the golf course more sustainable. Well, it, it allows us to push back any major renovations uh, longer and longer. The more playable acreage we have, the more we can disperse our traffic. And the, the key part about doing this renovation and expanding these pinch points or funneled areas is that, that we're gonna give us an area that we can maintain better. So all of our maintenance practices 
that we do during the summer and the cultural practices we do to, to help grow the turf, they're gonna be more effective on an area that's not as compacted. So it's gonna help us make the golf course life last longer. So as far as benefits, it sounds like cost and, and maintenance and hours and all of the and, above. And, and less complaints coming yeah, to the yeah. maintenance department. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yes. so there's many benefits then. Um, keeping sustainability in mind, could you explain the impact to the goal of making the golf course more sustainable if these changes aren't made? Well, what happens if we, if we don't correct the obvious issues that we have, we're going to get into the same cycle that we're going through now. I mean, we they Stonebridge uh, redid their golf course in 2010, and here we are in 2021, 20, 11 years later, and everybody was complaining complain about the fairway. So we're gonna if we don't change what we what we're doing, we're gonna get the same results. Yeah, the same. So yeah. yep. Um, some of our members that live on areas where we are proposing ponds are concerned about what that will do to their property. Can you explain um, the potential risk, how it's how we will mitigate it during excavation and design? Yeah, they during construction, um, the contractor will test the, the soil around anything they're digging on, whether it's a lake and a fairway that they, they do, they uh, they pour they, what they call berry holes during construction where they pull up all the old turf and put it, but they'll contact, uh, conduct tests on all those areas. And if it, becomes a question where it's not going to be sustainable or to put a lake there, they'll find a way to stabilize all lake banks, whether it's based on slope, whether they're planting on a lake bank, putting in a bulkhead, um, riprap the sides, but they, they will take extra care around any structure. Um, and lastly, about water, <laughs> <laughs> hole number eight and the weir. Um, we would all like it gone or moved away somewhere is it first of all why is it there what does it do and is there anything we can do about it it's a, actually it's not a weir at all well, technically it is a <laughs> weir but it's called an outfall structure and it's it's there to help maintain our lake levels so when each each basin has its own outfall structure so when those lake levels rise to a point they'll spill over into these outfall structures mm -hmm. and keep our uh, lakes at a at maintained level um, the other benefit I mean, we we can move it. Obviously, it's going to take some permitting and some and some razzle dazzle with the county, um, but uh, I'm sure it's going to be um, a, a cost involved in it too. But I was assured by the contractor and the architect that it can be moved. I've never been involved in moving one, but it, that'll be a fun project. But the other thing I want to say about the the water, um, we get I get a lot of questions about the surface uh, area that's that's you have to compensate to the surface area um and if people ask me about you know the volume <laughs> well we get to not play around with a little bit what we get actually dig some of these newer lakes a little bit deeper so a lot of people are worried about us moving water is going to impede drainage around the property not just on the golf course but everywhere on the property our focus obviously is the the sustainability of the whole property so I look at it as an opportunity to improve what we've known as some troubled areas around the property. So I think it's gonna really help us out in the long run. Okay, okay. Um, quickly moving on to the next. <laughs> Mark has all the answers so we can go fast on this. On to our other issues. Um, there have been questions about landscaping, slope in the fairways, bunker placement and shape about yardages. When do we get the answers to this? Is are we there yet with our golf course design? When does this happen? We won't probably get uh, the total landscape picture until uh, we'll probably get a more detailed landscape picture come November for the vote package. But we won't be able to get out there and actually show where everything is going until we get the detailed to scale drawings, the architectural drawings of the of the elevations and and the slopes of the and where the greens are going because there's a lot of landscape that's strategically placed and there's a lot of landscapes that are aesthetically placed so that that's kind of a work in progress once we get the architectural drawings because then we tie in drainage we tie in irrigation um bunker placement is huge and and all obviously the landscape and how about yardage people ask when, when does that happen i think we'll get a closer number number for the vote package but i still can't give the exact yardage of the golf course Every time I've talked to Kip Schulte, so the, our architect, 
he doesn't expect um, the yardage to uh, be lessened at all. If anything, we may gain a couple yards, but I don't, I, I think it's the more where people are going to notice yardage change is in the middle tees where we stretch them and, 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 and shorten them to allow better play and more versatile play. Okay. But not on the fairways or the exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, of course, Stonebridge has its berms and there are two of them that are very important to our, our residents, number three and number 15. If you could talk a little bit about the changes that are going to be made and what we're going to be able to do to maintain their protection. Well, the idea with, with those berms, and we also have the one kind of number four and, and 12 may change a little bit too, but um, the berms were built and then the property line fences were put in. So we actually have usable land up to our property line that we've been wasting for 13 or 15 years or maybe even longer. Um, so the idea is to push those berms and those buffers back to our property line. So during construction, it's going to look bare. Um, we will transplant and move trees as much as possible, uh, save and transplant them as much as possible. We're going to push these, these perimeter berms back to um, the property line so we can gain as much usable area as we can. Um, we, we lose a lot of playable um, golf course on, on three with those berms coming down because the ball will go up there and it'll roll back down. You can't drive a cart up there. So it, that number three is a big wide hole, but it's Firmed on both sides, mm -hmm. so it funnels everything to the and four is the same way. So that the idea is is we we're stretching the golf course to use the entire amount of property that Stonebridge has. And that ties in with the sustainability because people yes. are all moving all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I I do take it. I mean I I feel like it's our responsibility to re-landscape these berms to a point where it's better than what they have now. Okay. So that's a, will be the goal of minor whoever's still here. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking about protection, on hole number 11, we're moving the, the vegetation to the other side of, of the cart path. Yeah, and it, 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 this really should have been done a long time ago because the way 11 is designed, you have one entry point and one extra exit point. It's helped a little bit now with the guys walking and the ladies walking because they'll cut over the 12 tees, but almost all the um, cart traffic, the, the walker, the golfers come in and out of that little mm -hmm. gazebo thing and, and walk on the same spot. So bringing that cart path in and putting the landscape behind it opens up multiple entry and exit points. So it's, it's better for the green. And obviously I've already gone through a replanting on 11. So I know <laughs> the importance of a proper buffer there. So we will certainly make sure that that's taken care of and the residents of Middleburger will be happy again. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> um, I envision myself during this project okay. going to hole by hole with the contractor <laughs> and the architect said, you know, these people this want house. this <laughs> over here. <laughs> we got to make sure we do this okay. over here. So, You're Ambassador, thank you. Um, we have had a lot of questions about a carryover of water and reducing it for the back tees. And we'd like to know why, <laughs> since not that many people Play the back tees. What what does this do for the for right? The course? And and that obviously during one of the focus groups that was a big uh, talk because of one of the focus groups was the lower handicap men. So they were talking about a couple holes that the force carry was too long, which is understandable. But the reason why we're moving some of this water and gaining some land is for the sustainability factor and spreading out wear and tear. The byproduct of that was that it did shorten the carry for a couple of tee shots. And not just for the one and twos, but the threes and black balls and gold balls and covered. I mean, so it's, it, it made it more playable uh, tee shot for all the tees. And the biggest, the biggest reason for, for shortening some of that carry is to encourage players to go back there. You have a lot of, uh, we have a lot of men and some women that could go back and play the two tees if they weren't, had to carry the ball 200 yards. So that in turn spreads out the wear and tear on all the tees. So I mean, our majority of golfers are coming on two or three sets of tees. If we can spread that out, it's gonna help us last long. Um, on the plan, some of the greens are just shifted slightly. Is, why are we doing this? Does this help the course? The yes, it does. Um, two, two of them come to mind real quick, number one and number 17. They're both in what, what us in the industry call positioned in a pocketed area. Um, where you're, you're covered 
and it's not as much the shade as it is the air movement, hence the fan we have on number 15. Uh, it, it makes it difficult to grow grass. Um, I, I like to tell some of my colleagues that I can grow grass on concrete. I just don't <laughs> want to. You know? So, um, but moving those out of those those pocketed areas um, is really going to help. And, and even with the the weird undulations on some of the greens, it, it creates drainage issues where, like, the bottom of the hill is wetter than that mm -hmm. the crest of the hill. So it makes it challenging to to have a, a consistent putt on a oddly shaped green. And um, and this is our last question, actually. Um, between holes uh, six and seven are the hills, and our and our residents <laughs> there are concerned that that we're losing the character and also their current views. What can you do to assure us that well, we will? <laughs> <laughs> um, I can assure you that I'll be standing out there making sure that the view is fine. But I actually think it's going to be better. I mean, it's it's nondescript mounting out there right now. There's a couple oak trees that are closer to the property line, but. The rest is just green grass and mounting. And the, the plan that Kip and I had talked about is, is dressing that up with landscape all the way up. We're, obviously, we're gonna have to soften the mounds a little bit to, to widen the seventh fairway and, and widen the sixth fairway a little bit to create it more playable. Because like I said before, when you have that steep mounding, it pushes all your traffic to one area. Mm -hmm. So if you have a lake here and steep mounting here, everybody's mm -hmm. driving down that runway. Mm -hmm. So we, if we can soften those slopes and landscape the middle of it, I don't think we're going to, we're, we're not going to lose any appreciable elevation in there. And you're certainly not going to uh, hinder anybody's view. Okay. All right. Well, that's it. We, I think we've answered all your questions. And thank you so much, Mark, for all your help. Thank you, Mark and Lorraine. Great, great shot. Good shot. Okay. Uh, I think we need to stop right now and say a big thank you to Gail Fisher, Jim Hole, Steve Deneen, Tom Pickerton, and Lorraine and Mark for a terrific presentation today. As my uh, sergeant in arms, Mr. Deneen said, we are very blessed to have such a talented group of neighbors, and I repeat, neighbors, willing to put in the time that has had to be put in in order to uh, do the research and prepare these plans. Thank you all very much for all you have done. So what have we learned here today? Simply said, we are busting at the seams everywhere, and we need to act now. First, the bistro continues to be more popular than we ever dreamed it would be, and the kitchen is simply too small. As Steve said, you no longer are going to have to arrive at four to get a peek at six. You're gonna eventually be able to get uh, good food from a more expanded menu, delivered in a timely fashion and with terrific lakeside views and poolside service. Second, the popularity of veranda dining, who knew that was something, the veranda dining. But the popularity of that overlooking the 18th Green and Fairway this year is proof positive that a reconfigured grill room with an easy in and out access to the outside will be a huge success. Third, our golf course needs to be renovated, as you just heard, no later than 2023. And as Tom mentioned, we even got the green light from the USGA agronomist, who is an expert in soil management, saying now's the time to do it. So with the renovation focused on extending the sustainability and enhancing playability, everyone will play on fairer fairways with better views and better greens for the next 15 to 20 years. And then finally, there is simply not enough space anywhere to accommodate the request for meetings, social events, and enrichment classes. And the demand for the fitness classes and workout space cannot be met by the present fitness facility. So just imagine if you were taking a morning jog on a treadmill with a second story view of a pool in the 18th fairway. 
Then later in the day, you attend a Stonebridge committee meeting at four in the afternoon, followed by enjoying a cocktail and a buffet at your neighborhood's welcome back party. All of this being held in the same two-story community center where card players and lovers of Mahjong are enjoying their games in their own separate room. We rightly are calling it the community center, but we should probably call this the multi-purpose building. So ladies and gentlemen, these two subcommittees have worked to present a, a plan built on the members input that will significantly enhance the Stonebridge experience for all of us. Why should we wait? Haven't you worked your whole life to enjoy this type of life? You've earned it, the time to enjoy it is now. And now I'm going to turn it over to Dave Harper, who will explain how much all of these wonderful enhancements will cost you and the financing plan. Thank you, Jim. And uh, good evening. Um, so, so before I cover the funding, financing, and the price per member, uh, you need to know and understand how we got here. Um, and I know, knock off the suspense and just get to the bottom line. Uh, <laughs> be patient. We'll get there. Uh, the survey, and you've heard all about the survey, but I will say the survey was important in, in identifying a lot of this pricing. The member survey sparked the call to action and ultimately became the cornerstone for the designs and plans you saw, no pun intended. For those who don't know, Cornerstone was the name of the company that did the survey. <laughs> so let's again uh, review what the members said from the 2020 survey. The survey was taken back in February and March. So that's only about a year and a few months ago. Uh, it was fresh when we started the planning process, and it's still fresh today. Um, the survey asked high-level general questions regarding support to expand, enhance, improve, increase capacity, etc. The survey dis dis uh, preceded any designs, plans, detail, or cost basis for any of us to know how much or what the desired changes were, were gonna cost and without any knowledge of any annual cost increases. Regardless, 73% of the respondents said they would be willing to pay between $100 and $250 per month for changes to the club. 41% checked off $100. 32% checked off either 150, 200 or 250. That remaining 27% were between the 100 and the $99. The average of 840 respondents, which is nearly three quarters of our 799 households, was $110 per member per month. The survey was set up as a check the box list of dollar selections with nothing in between 100 and 150. I might add, and I'll explain that in a minute. As I said before, there was no magic or fact basis to support or argue the average $110 per member per month number at the time. It was a target, a goal, a wish, a hope, whatever you want to call it, and not viewed or intended as a mandate, nor did we see it as a not to exceed. It was, if it was, it, then it would stifle the planning and the design process. Now, none of this is to disparage the survey or its important results in any way, only to point out that the survey was an important tool to gauge members' general desires, wishes, and appetite for enhancements. And the price tag portion of the survey was a relative measure or uh, a relative measure uh, of for enhancements. And the, the um, it was a relative measure or gauge of our members willingness to pay for the desired improvements they asked for. 
our financial related assumptions. Let me get to those and go over them briefly before we talk about numbers. But what was guiding our, uh, our financial assumptions is number one, there was no debt, new debt to be taken on until the old debt is paid off. That debt is paid off February 11th of 2023. Renovations would not begin until March or April of 2023. You've heard that through the presentation. We used the average salary results of $110, which again was a goal and not a mandate, but a not, not to exceed. By virtue of our club's business model, our debt capacity is determined by what the members are willing to pay. This will ultimately be determined by a member vote once the detailed plans are reviewed and agreed upon by you, the members. This first town hall meeting is the start of that process. Also, our club should not take on any new debt that has a payback period that exceeds the average useful life of the new assets being added or enhanced. That's just logical, but sometimes forgotten. Exceeding that useful life could negatively impact timing and availability for future needed financing or funding. So there are two major variables that um, could seriously impact our plan. Interest costs and construction increases. <clears throat> We have assumed an interest rate of four and a half percent, and that could change before the financing is put in place. <clears throat> However, good news is the Fed, Federal Reserve Chairman has recently pronounced that they expect the Fed rates to stay stable through 2023. Whether they do or not, we don't know because all you, you all know that the Fed's changed their mind. Uh, at whim. We should be ready to, to shop our loan starting around winter of 2023. That would be 22, 23. Uh, typically three months to six months before uh, we're ready to put a shovel on the ground. The interest rate increases could certainly have a financial impact, but another very important and volatile assumption that could significantly impact our budget is the escalating cost of construction. Construction costs have been increasing on average 4.5% for the past five years. Although sources uh, recently have told us that uh, they are running much higher than that. Any delay of construction or renovation beyond the 2023 period will escalate our price at least 4.5% each year compounded with interest costs over the next 12 years. Just for comparison, we paid about $6 million for this clubhouse back in uh, 20, 2012. Um, that would cost us about $10 million in 2023 under the current uh, increases in construction costs, or 60% increase in 10 years. Another variable that we've looked at is the loan term. Obviously, the term of the loan payback will affect the price that we all pay. So, let me get to the cost numbers. The estimated cost of what you saw that was presented by the subcommittees for facilities and for golf course. The golf course at 5.6 million, the facilities 7.1 million, and I've, in, I've included a rounding in there of uh, 300,000 to get us to a total of 13 million. So how we pay for this, the funding sources, we have $2 million that will be available to us in March of 2023. <clears throat> that would leave an $11 million loan to equal the $13 million. So just to remind everyone, our current documents do not allow for special assessments for new capital projects. 
So our only options for funding right now are through either reserves or through loans. So the question that you have is how much is this would cost me? And if you see down at the bottom, we've put an assumption there of a 12 year payback, which would cost $124 per member per month. So hopefully uh, before uh, many of you uh, hyperventilate, um, let me uh, compare the current loan payment to what that $124 proposed loan payment would, would uh, compare to. Uh, again, currently you're paying $76 per member per month, which is billed quarterly, you pay it in a quarterly basis of $227 a quarter, that's on your bill. Uh, that payment time value adjusted to 2023 would be approximately $120 per member per month. So that's only $4 below what we're recommending here of 124. Let me illustrate it another way. Um, and, and, and this more in a, uh, an affordable equivalent way, that an increase of $76, an increase from 76 to 124 is $48. That's $12 a week. That $12 increase in a weekly loan payment is less than two small glasses of wine per week at the bar. <laughs> However, the enjoyment value of the new club amenities will be much greater and longer lasting than the best. <laughs> so sustainability, you've heard that a lot today. Per, from that's from our outside and our resident experts. What you heard is a plan designs proposed will substantially increase the useful life of the proposed redesigned club and golf course well beyond 12 years, such that we will not be speaking of future major construction projects for at least 13 to 15 years out or longer. Our current normal annual reserve funding and budget process should be able to fund any needed major and minor repairs and maintenance within that 13 to 15 year period. So then you ask the question, well, why not go out 13 to 15 years on loan? And my answers are threefold. One is just because the new assets have a long, longer useful uh, life doesn't justify in my mind that we just extend our debt to the max. We said we don't want to loan a loan payback period longer than the average useful lives of the new assets. And I will add as treasurer, I don't want to see it even close. We should be somewhat conservative regarding our debt and provide some cushion or buffer for our future. And third, at keeping uh, our interest costs down. An example of going from a 12 year loan just to a 13 year loan adds almost $300,000 of interest to the project with no added value. Why this plan is right for Stone Ridge now? Well, five things, it might be a sixth. A, major, a majority of the members almost three quarters of the households told the board they want enhancements to the facilities and the golf course, as you've heard already from the survey. The subcommittees have been working hard to design a wild plan that they believe the members want and feel this is the best solution and timing for the long-term success and enjoyment of this club. A lesser priced project will not achieve the wild factor that members are looking for. Meanwhile, costs are increasing four and a half percent each year and delays would mean substantially higher costs later. And the fifth thing is that our peer clubs and according to RSM, our auditors who does a report each year says 75% of our peers are doing what we're talking about doing now. 
They are investing money in clubs to stay current and satisfy their members. And if we do not stay current, that could entice potential new member or owners to choose those other clubs over Stonebridge. And I'm sure yesterday many of you saw the newspaper. Naples Lakes is doing a huge improvement. Case in point. And again, to Jim's point, uh, those who feel that they may not be here in 12 years, all the more reason to make them needed in the campus now. You can enjoy the, it, uh, you can begin to enjoy the new course and facilities. And when you transfer title, the next owner will take on the remaining debt. But in the meantime, you're reaping the early benefits of the enhanced flow. So lastly, in conclusion, I will just say, do it right and do it one time. That is separate projects so that we can, one, avoid multiple shutdowns and disruptions, two, avoid multiple loans, three, avoid the risk of interest rate hikes, and four, avoid the ever certain construction cost increases. This plan will provide sustainability and extend the useful lives of our amenities and enjoyment. As we previously said, many changes in this plan could last 13 to 15 years or longer instead of our history of doing major repairs every 10 years. So I would just, before I end here, just give you some examples of what the impact of these potential cost increases if we delay. For example, if we go from a fifth, four and a half percent to a 5% interest rate, that's a 50 basis point increase that would add $3.33 per, per month to the payment. If we increase our construction, if the uh, cost of construction increases 1% for every 1% increase, that equates to $1.50 on the monthly, monthly basis. So multiply that times 10. If it's a 10%, 10 it's $15 per month more. So just as, as a perspective, um, and with that, I will shut up and <laughs> move my time back to the president. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. Uh, you all can get your um, master's in business administration diplomas as you leave. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Dave. Seriously, thank you very much for that, uh, that explanation. Final comments before we go to questions and comments that are coming in. Uh, between today and election day, this election day being November, uh, you will continue to receive updates and you'll have multiple times to share your comments and your questions. So keep telling us what you think. Mark down April 21st, 22nd, and 24th to review the uh, facilities plans that will be on display here at the clubhouse. And uh, again, give us your comments. And the final thing is there, you know, we talked a lot uh, but came to a quick decision, and, and Dave actually just mentioned it pretty well. Uh, some questions came to us saying, well, why are you having one vote? Shouldn't we have two? And it really comes down to two issues. The first issue is disruption. <clears throat> if you do two votes and one plan passes and the other doesn't, you are going to come back, revisit that plan, and you're going to vote for it. That disruption will be a year, and then a little bit later, and then a year again, and you really do not want that. And the second thing is all the costs that you're going to waste, basically, you're just gonna cost you way more money than you have to spend if you separate those two into two different projects. So having said all that technically, Ben, do you wanna give us some questions? We have uh, a lot of experts here that can answer most of them. Sure. Uh, yeah, the first question we have is from uh, Tony Pavia. And he uh, comments that the membership has indicated that when the current clubhouse assessment runs out, it would support a modest increase in the current assessment. 
Do the proposed changes fall within those parameters? I think the answer is yes. Yeah. Yeah. A comment from Ms. Beth Bryant. She says, I think it's very exciting and I love the ideas. <laughs> yeah. 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 Let's see. What is the surface of the bocce courts? I believe they would be hard true. Hard true. Yeah. Oh, the surface would be hard true. Right? Hard true. Yeah. This is Mulligan asks, what if someone placed their towels there at the pool for the entire day? <laughs> I don't think about it. Her, her previous question was about the cabanas. Oh, the cabanas. Was, would the cabanas be first come, first serve, reservations? Chelsea. You're using Chelsea. Yeah. yeah. Chelsea system for the Chelsea cabanas. system for the cabanas. Good idea. And uh, yeah. Mr. Deneen will be the sergeant of arms for that, too. <laughs> <laughs> the towel boy. <laughs> Mary Delisi, she says that the facilities plan looks great. I can really see how the new bistro would become the primary meet you here place in the club. I'm excited about the idea of being able to enjoy refreshments around the resort style pool. And I also will enjoy sitting on the covered terrace to view tennis exhibitions. Yeah. I think you'll find, just as Ben's looking, I think you'll find many opportunities to go up on the decks and just sit there and enjoy something. Uh, there's no place to go bring a book and read something, is there? Where would you go? Right now. Nowhere. That'd be great. Uh, one comment from John Michelle. It says one concern is the pool area large enough for members and guests because it's hard to tell from the slide. Steve, how much bigger is it uh, supposed to be? It's almost twice as big. Almost twice as big. So the answer to that is no worries. No worries, sir. And the, and the other point on that too is there's not a defining line between the pool area and the bistro. So we have table counts and seat counts, but in all actuality, they kind of bleed into each yeah. other. We just drew a line and said, okay, this soft seating is over here and that is over there. Um, but there's a lot of opportunity for that space to bleed from one to the other. Mm -hmm. And as Mrs. Fisher pointed out, there's a lot of space, open space, you know, as far as functions and versatility for different types of setups, even, you know, entertainment at the bistro will have a lot of flexibility on how that's set up. So that it doesn't detract from other areas of the operation. You know, those people that attended uh, that, that are online watching and listening, just think back to January a year ago when we had our 25th anniversary. What a party that was and how wonderful this place really looked all dressed up. A bigger pool area, a bigger spa, the meeting spaces. It's going to repeat your birthday. All right, this January question is uh, concerning the golf course renovation from Steve Fogarty. He says, are there any plans to level off the middle of holes 13 and even priority to cure the severe runoff to the right into the water. Maybe it was improved earlier, but still very severe, including bumps in the middle of the fairway. Um, every fairway will be rebuilt. Everyone will be torn apart, replanted, rebuilt. It's ground up for every fairway. Yeah. And recontour to the drainage too. And we also have areas where the drainage is quite low. All that's addressed during the renovation. Four is a good example. You know how we have that drain right in the middle of the fourth fairway? Those kind of things. Uh, question from James Gauthier. Apologies if I mispronounced that. Will you offer a one time payout with a discount? Mm -hmm. I can address it. The, uh, so there isn't the option to do that, unfortunately. I think Mr. Harper described that in his presentation uh, because of the way that our documents are written. Uh, we would not be able to do this by a special assessment. Therefore, the only option is through reserves. 
and or through a loan. <clears throat> That's another question from Steve Fogarty. Does, does the fitness center cost assume purchase of exercise equipment? Much of the current equipment is already dated, will only be more out of date in 2023. And it does. Uh, equipment is part of the uh, budget plan. And uh, in fact, some of the equi equipment that is starting to become outdated, we've uh, intentionally hung on to until 23 with the intention of the replacement with a new series of equipment. This question is from uh, Mary Pettit. It says, regarding sustainability, the tree buffer at the bottom of the 10th hole, protecting the Willow Bend neighborhood from Immokalee Road noise was taken out by storm damage and has still not been replaced, even though there seems to have been sufficient insurance settlement monies to provide the appropriate replacement planting. But this has still not occurred. The road noise is growing increasingly loud if we're going to spend money on the golf course enhancements, which I support, I do request that the Willow Bend planting deficit at the bottom of the 10th hole along the Immokalee Road fence, where plantings were removed, be replaced. I think it's unfair that the road noise muffler has not yet replanted and this oversight should be remediated. Thank you. And, that, and we'll look at all those areas, all the uh, buffer areas on the golf course, we will review and look at. Uh, a part of what was done on the north side of 10 was a result of the hurricane. Um, in, in the desire to create a better buffer, we were looking at putting in an actual wall there. That would have required us to remove all of the landscaping because of the size footers that are needed uh, by county code now. So we ended up putting a fence to improve security and next is landscaping to further enhance that. And that will certainly be part of what we look at. Okay. okay, we have a question from Kathy Bergeron regarding the finance piece. So are you saying our increase would be $124 or 134 to 76, which would only be $48 per month? The increase would be forty-eight dollars, not one hundred and twenty-four. Right, the seventy-six. Correct. One twenty-four is the new payment. Seventy-six is the old payment. It's forty-eight. Not on top. Right. Not on top. Yeah. So we have a question from Beth Ryan: Is the hot tub? to be enlarged and or improved in any way in the current plan? Um, right now it's around 12 feet diameter. So there's a lot of space around it. So it's early, I'd say it's early planning for that. So room, room to grow given how much land we can gain. Possibility. Yes. And as Ben's going through these looking for questions, I'm seeing there's a lot of positive comments in there too. Uh, great presentation. Thank you to all the presenters. Well thought out information, very well organized. So don't think there's not a lot of positives coming through. I know Ben's just searching for questions. And also what we're going to do from now on, I mean, not from now on, we have been doing this. We accumulate all of this, all of these comments and questions. We analyze them and we track them and we will put them together to make sure we go through just like Lorraine and Mark did, they took all the information that they had and they prepared bigger questions that address most, if not all of their concerns. And we will continue to do that from now until we, when we present things for the next uh, November meeting. And there'll be other meetings prior in between now and then as well. Any others? So, more. Yeah, and then we'll ask our, uh, the audience, it's not supposed to be here, but they're here and they might have. <laughs> Steve is available for Tuesday nights uh, at the uh, lap club. <laughs> Off the hook, that's what it's... Uh, this is a good question from uh, Jim Gett. Says, will the previous outside pizza oven be incorporated into the new bistro kitchen? 
Ah, it's there. a puzzlement. <laughs> and the answer is we don't know yet. We're not sure. <laughs> We're hoping that it could be incorporated, but uh, that is still a work in progress. We will have the capability to do pizza, whether in the old oven or new. <laughs> yeah, that's true. We should put the boxes board in the middle of a pizza. We have a hot time. Sure. Just because I skipped too many positive comments and Tim called me out on it, to say that uh, Gift Brown says great presentation, great concept for all needs that we have identified. It's a very compelling story. Thank you, Mr. Former President. <laughs> My wife give me a good comment. <laughs> I'm still waiting to log in. Oh. <laughs> All right. I guess we'll close with this one from Ellen Heron. Ellen Hen. She says, "Fabulous job! Kudos to everyone for all the hard work and thoughtfulness that has been." into this effort. I can't wait to enjoy the final enhancements. Okay. Right. More comments that we will uh, address via email after the meeting. Great. And thank you all. And if you have, wait for the next, uh, you'll get an email soon that will allow you to provide more comments, ask any questions that come to mind, etc. Yellow, are we okay? We're all we're good. Have any questions? Huh? Anybody in here? Nope. Okay. Thank you all. And uh